Well, here is my cart. It was sitting up on the island in the house and I was looking at it and I realized, yeah, mm -mm, this isn't gonna happen. I'm not gonna be the one to put it together. As you can see, my husband got it all put together. And I was impressed by the way it came in the box, the way they packaged it, because they, they did it in a way that ensured that you had every piece, that you weren't going to like, you know, be missing a bolt or things like that. They did a really good job. They had everything shrink wrapped and everything separated. It was really well done. But anyways, the sun is not shining brightly, but it's still a beautiful day today, and I hope that everyone has a beautiful day also, and I'll talk to you in just a little while. I'm in the car because I am on my way to David's Bridal. I just received an email that my dress is in, so I'm going to go and pick it up, and hey, yeah, I'll show it to you when I get back. Well, as you can see, I am back, and I have my dress. And I am really happy with it. I went ahead and I tried it on and everything's good and the zipper works well. And I actually went and started looking around for a pair of shoes and yeah, that's probably gonna be a problem because most of everything that they have out there is high heels and I don't do high heels. No, not at my age, not with my feet. So that being said, that is something that I still need to look for. But I'm very pleased with the dress because it is so much prettier and so much nicer than what I thought that I would ever be able to find that I could afford. So anyways, I'll step away. You can see the complete dress. But I am really happy with it. And there is a sash and I'll show you. It goes around the middle. I hope my camera is going to focus in. It goes around the middle and you're supposed to have a bow there on the side. The sleeves are... Uh, a see-through lace but the body part is lined but it's basically navy blue and that's kind of like a silvery taupe don't know how well there is like a little bit of sparkle that goes through it not a whole lot but I'm just really happy with it very pleased with it and when I tried it on it was all good although I was a little disappointed when I got out of the store because yeah it was raining. So now I can't work on my gardens after I have that little, nice little wagon to use. But oh well, there will be another day for that. Anyways, I hope that you enjoyed this and I will talk to all of you in just a little while. today's devotion, we will be reading from 1 John chapter 3, verse 18. Little children, let us not love in word or tongue, but in deed and in truth. Now, the word tongue used here means talk. And I've had people tell me that what we say with our mouth is a less important form of love than what we do with our hands or feet, our deeds. And they use this verse to back that up. So today, I wanted to bring some clarification to this matter. You see, the same apostle that wrote today's scripture verse also wrote in John 17, 13, these things I speak that they may have my joy fulfilled in themselves. And John 6, 63, the words that I have spoken to you are spirit and life. Now, if the speaking of Jesus imparts joy and the words of Jesus give spiritual life, then surely such speaking is love. 
Quite honestly, I don't think today's scripture verse is trying to say that one's deeds are more important or that the only way to show or to demonstrate love is through the deeds or the things that we do. So let's look at five points that the Bible tells us about the importance of our words. First, with the mouth, everlasting joy is imparted. John 17, 13. These things I speak in the world, that they may have my joy fulfilled in themselves. Second, by the mouth, faith is awakened. Romans 10, 7. Faith comes from hearing and hearing through the word of Christ. Third, with the mouth, courage imparts helpful things. Acts 20:20. 20, 20. I did not shrink from declaring to you anything that was helpful. Fourth, with the mouth, blessings come. Romans 12, 14. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse them. Fifth, with the mouth, grace is given. Ephesians 4.29 Let no corrupting talk come out of your mouths, but only such as is good for building up, that it may give grace to those who hear. Clearly, our words will be judged according to our talk as much as by our deeds. As Jesus said in Matthew chapter 12, verses 36 and 37, But I say to you, that for every idle word men speak, they will give an account of it in the day of judgment. For by your words you will be justified, and by your words you will be condemned. And with that, I want to remind you, life happens. Let's enjoy it. And let's never treat our talk or our deeds with neglect or preference. Many fail as lovers by thinking that they can replace words with deeds. And many fail thinking words are enough. Let's always remember both, both our words and our deeds. As Colossians chapter 3, 17 tells us, whatever you do in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. God bless, and I will talk to you tomorrow. Music